Well, welcome back everyone to Let's Play Kerball Space Program, episode number two. So in the last episode, we concluded with a fair chunk of science. I think we got 55 for that last little sojourn through the Kerball Launch Center. And I want to use that science to something for something right away. We can get the Science Junior, 45, and this is going to enable me to make um, much better designs. I don't know if there's anything else I want to get with, well, 13 science, I guess, might as well just get this one so we have some ability to do non-solid state solid I, yeah, I don't know why I call them solid state. It's because I work with solid state electronics, so <laughs> anyway, we will do solid rocket boosters. Well we don't want to do solid rocket boosters. Yeah, they're okay, but it's nice to have controlled burns as well where you can throttle up or down accordingly. Uh, okay, anyway, so that science is gonna enable me to build a better science bus much more science we can get back, but I don't think I'm going to subject you to that right away. Not right at the start of the episode, let's do something kind of exciting. I think that one of our missions upcoming is to escape the atmosphere. And I think that that would be, whoa, 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 we can test the launch. Well, let's, let's test. The, having the swivel engine as um, something we could test at the launch would have been good if I hadn't just bought the swivel, but since I just did just buy it, we can do this one real quick. <clears throat> and then, um, again, I can go back and do some more science collection so that we can open up the possibilities. I don't know why, but it's just so gratifying to me. Yay! Okay, yeah, there it is. It's just really satisfying to me that uh, you can uh, to like slowly progress down the science field. I mean, I guess I'm just a research... I'm a person who likes the research trees in almost any game. So that's why I like games with research options, because I really like the feeling of progression. I mean, it's very common, right? People like progressing. So that's going to give us, well, we got the, I think all of our money back. You give us the contract money. Um, no science or anything like that. But we have a little bit of extra money, a little bit of extra science. That's not enough science to do anything. We're now going to be 20 for the next one. And what's the ones, like, maybe I'll take a, a moment but I am trying to beeline towards this advanced science tech. Now, 550, you might say that that's quite a ways off. <laughs> You're right. But after we gobble up, I mean, so the more science that we have, the more gobbling up of science we can do at the Kerbal Launch Center. And I might even wander off and go do some stuff at the shores and all that. Especially if there's contracts that require like splashdown stuff, we can go over and get splashed down and do some samples. So anyways, I'm gonna go ahead and construct uh, uh, a slightly more stable version of the, the whatever it was called, the Jaeger, or no, the, the Cheetah. And let's do, uh, I'll do a few more science missions off camera. All right, the Cheetah 2 is ready to go. I want to point out just one thing that I did here that uh, wasn't like particularly clever, but something that everyone else probably thought of. So hey, if you keep, if you try to put the wheels on this uh, this one, when it's rotated like this, you'll get the symmetry like this, which is goofy. But if you do it like this, as if it's going to be rotated, and then you can actually take the design and rotate it, and voila! Now, I actually don't want to do that because I already did that, and I don't want to mess up my other wheels. So anyway, that's uh, just a fun little trick that Everyone else in the world probably already knows, but it's the... Anyways, finally came to me, so we're is slow to learn. There's our beautiful flag. It looks really good. Okay, so on to science. I'll report back soon. I mean, there are some people who might ask why, but... Kerbal Space Program is really more of a game of why not, and also not just asking why not, but then immediately covering your ears and yelling really loudly so you can't hear the answer, because it's just better off to find out for yourself anyway. We're going a bit fast here. But anyway, this thing is just giving us tons of science. I think we're already over 100. Oh my god, please break. There's a couple of lips here which are <laughs> very dangerous. Eh. Oh, okay, we navigated it just fine. I have one more test here to get the last 0.4 science. That's right. That's how we do it. Every little nickel and dime counts. Anyways, I'll cut back away, but I thought I'd... people probably wanted to see this glorious beast of a science bus in action. 
And I also wanted to, before I forget, mention that thank you to Leth who mentioned that you don't actually have to take crew reports in all the different separate modules. The only thing I was missing, this very simple step I was missing, is you need to exit the module, collect them, like grab it from the, you know, just grab data or whatever it is, and then uh, you can kind of like store it. All. They, they stack once you do that. So anyways, thanks Leth for the tip. I'll be using it. And that, my friends, is why we do it. 69, well, 69, sorry, 59.2, more science. We've uh, actually collected a fair amount. I've noticed that the it cost about 500 to 1,000 to run one of these missions. It looks like it's under 1,000, but let's see what this one is. 30,980. And this thing is, they should be paying me to run this thing. 30,980. So yeah, this one was a little bit over 600. Yeah, um, I think it's very effective for the amount of science we're getting, which is I'm willing to exchange. I will be always willing to exchange something for science, at least until we max out our science. And by that point, we probably won't be hurting for either reputation or money anyway. But let's go ahead and look at the science things because, yeah, I mean, we can get more science. Now, there's no real next level, next tier science that we can unlock. So we're going to be stuck doing some some unfun things like trying to use a rocket ship or something. And I know that it's it's like I said, let's try to do an, an escape from the atmosphere this um, during this episode. I still plan to do that. But this uh, progression system, I just I can't get away from this, this fun unlocking of technology, especially because I am patient. I am willing to <laughs> go through Kerbal's launch center and just collect all the hoover up all the science lying there. It's just lying there waiting to be taken. So yeah, and it'll give us the ability to do aerodynamics. Now, I, I would love to do um, Lightning Dragon, one of the guys in the community, also has a YouTube channel and has done a lot of Kerbal Space programs. So he was sitting down with me, um, well, it was maybe a couple weeks ago or something, but we were going through aircraft. We were Our goal was to make a single stage to orbit craft, and Lightning really helped me figure out, well, basically how to make aircraft work in Kerbal Space program. Because I think aircraft are the most finicky, the least intuitive, uh, the least uh, organic. What's the right word? Like the hardest to work with. You know, the, the least intuitive. Yeah, I think and whatever. I mean, you get the idea. It's they're they're not easy. When you build them, it's like, oh my gosh, that I didn't expect that to happen. Beyond what I mean, beyond just not knowing how to make an airplane anyway. I think even a person knowing how to make an airplane might have some difficulties. But nonetheless, we're going to do this one because I just love flight so much. And I really think that uh, picking up some of the contracts that we can now pick up. So do, by the way, do I still have that mission? No, I don't. But we can go over to mission control and maybe pick up some new ones. Yeah, we only have escape the atmosphere and orbit Kerbin. I also need to make sure that I pick up any of these type of missions. What are they? The Kerbin World First Record Keeping Society. I need to pick up those missions. Um, I don't know what happens if you actually accidentally let it expire does it you know does it just immediately refresh itself and appear back in your available or is it actually gone i don't know anyway let's see what we have here we have a test a heat shield splash down that's a nice easy one to do and it'll give me an opportunity to go visit the the waters and get a splash down eva samples um i think the material samples also reset when it's in water i'll have to go double check i just got to pull up my science tab anyway let's see um, so these observational studies, they may seem, well, the ones below 19,100 uh, 19, are now completely possible for us as long as we make a really stupid looking aircraft that can fly over there, which we can totally do. I won't do it right away, but yeah, yeah we will be doing that. Let's get to probably escape the atmosphere first. That would be fun. Okay, let's see. Above 19,400, this is not going to be possible, not not yet, but the uh, below 19,000 meters, that I can do. Mm -hmm. um, this looks pretty doable, haul a Mark 16 parachute into flight. I think that this is about, it's kind of like the natural um, hammer. Is it the hammer or is it the flea? I think it was the flea. It's like the natural height for the flea. So yeah, let me accept this. 
The only thing is you actually might not want to accelerate too quickly. And speaking of hammer and flea and all that, we have an, oh wow, 250, 250k up is, well, it's quite outer space. Is that? I think that's actually the outer limits of outer space. High enough up that if you just went straight up and went straight back down, you'd probably blow up. <laughs> you can, yeah, you, you, at that point, you're probably going to need to angle back in. And then we do have an opportunity to test the flea, and this one is still way too high up. Mm, and this one, we have to activate the staging part at 45. Yeah, this is also not one I, I'm not excited to do. Let's take a look at the tracking station just to figure out... Is it my first time in the tracking station? Uh, just to see which one of these was which. So engineers, so I should just look at the um, engineers tiers or location or agency. Both of them will be unique. Okay, so engineers tiers is in water. Gene's mis miscalculation is in water. Um, Dotton's curiosity is in water. And the roster's hindsight, I bet you that's the one that's below. And that is the one that uh, is on land. Engineer's Tears. Okay, so they just want us... Oh, boy. Well, it's a take a crew report in flight. That's actually not bad. We could just... All we need to do is literally fly over there and collect our reward. So I will accept that one as well. And that one is, like I said, they're going to have the fun of <laughs> necessitating us to actually go and build an aircraft, which is, I think, the most... It's, well, it's a pretty dangerous undertaking. Um, since we still have a little bit of science left, I'm going to go back out and do more science, but one of the other things I should consider doing is, since we're losing about 500, I believe that that's part... I, I'm actually not exactly sure why you lose that much money when you're recovering, like, let's say, at the R&D facility, if you took off from the launch pad. Uh, there is a, a subtraction from, like, moving away from the launch pad. I don't know. Um, if you go back to the launch pad, does that reset? I think so. So I think it just takes, it doesn't care where you went, just cares how far away from the launch pad you are. Here's another question though, and if you launch from the launch pad and you recover on the runway, does that count for full points? Or does the launch pad only count, does it only count if you launch from the launch pad and then return to the launch pad? And same is it vice versa, right? If you take off from the runway, can you land and stop on the launch pad for full recovery? I don't know. Anyway, I'm going to go do that science, um, which is going to, Give us that little bit of a malice, a um, little bit of a penalty in terms of money. But hey, even that one little contract was enough to kick us back up to almost 120000 But one thing we can do is get rovers, electricity and rovers. And that will actually allow us to, to putz around the base without having to actually use any fuel at all. It does, however, look like the very first rovers are catastrophically far away <laughs> that's how I would describe it way too far away I thought there was one earlier um, let me just look at this how would how is it what is this called yeah rover okay so let me just look for rover oh there it is oh my gosh we're, we're, we're only 90 sites we could get it yes exactly this is exactly what we need. Oh, my goodness. Nice, nifty little search function. These kind of things should just be in every game. So good. Okay, so I think we're going to have to buy this because this is going to... First of all, this will inspire a uh, revamp of the science bus, currently known as the Cheetah 2. It might need to become something else besides the Cheetah. I mean, the Cheetah is stealing all the good names. But that's a good one. So let me actually... do. Oh, we can't. Okay. That's perfect because I wasn't sure if I wanted to do that or not. Getting some of these other things like general rocketry. Okay, so I'm going to cut away again. Um, this is my my promise. After I do a few more science missions, spend a little bit more money to hoover up all the science just laying around here, probably need to do like two or even three more missions to get a um, fair amount of science. After that, we're either going to build an airplane or we're going to escape the atmosphere. So I'll see you back in a sec. Well, I think I answered my own question. <laughs> That's the great thing about the scientific method. You can have a hypothesis tested and then, you know, validate or invalidate it. Got a lot of science. That's not the thing I'm most interested in. 26,213, which I believe is almost exactly the cost of this thing. 
it's exactly the cost of it, which doesn't make any sense because I actually used liquid fuel, but maybe I just didn't use enough of it to even tick off a thing. So basically in this last one, I went around, did my science. I mean, the, the Cheetah 2 has been changing a whole bunch. It's, it's got a, a trim job since the last one, but I took it out. I think we did the administrative center and the astronaut facility, whatever that one's called. And then I drove it all the way back to the launch pad. I got my full money back. I just need to test it if I can do that same thing launching from the launch pad and go back to the, the runway. And I'm not sure even if the runway counts the entire thing. I think it might even be just the, the this side, like the not this side of the runway. Maybe it has to be the one on the left. I don't know. Anyway, um, we got a lot of science. So I think it's time to show off two things, first of all, and then jump into something more interesting. But this is what I love. Oh, no. It didn't count my crew report? Ugh, I was going to say I love seeing all of them exactly the same, but it didn't count my crew report from, well, either the administration center or the astronaut facility. Astronaut complex, that is. There it is. So that must be the administration. Yep. Administration is missing. I'll have to go. I, you know, that'll be easy to grab. Even with the aircraft, when we land it, we can just go on over and get a crew report afterwards. But okay, um, let's actually start doing the next thing. Wait. Well, first of all, the next thing has got to be getting that rover arm, so I can putz around. And now it's it's nighttime out. We're going to need some charge for that, so we will need to research this. <laughs> well, I guess that's just going to put us back down to no science. That's okay. I'm going to do it anyway. I think we can still get to outer space very easily with either the hammer or a whole bunch of <laughs> T-100 pods. Let me do this. What is it? Escape the atmosphere? Okay, it's time for something new. I am thinking that we need a name for this one too. So let me go, well, let me first design it and then we'll, the suspense of the name. Even though I guess I could be making comments about the name while we're designing. What do I want to do with this one? First, let me see what we have. We have the heat shield, which I forgot to do. Yeah, okay, the Mark 16, this would be a nice easy one to tick off. And I can do this or just with the basic, like the nothing. So I guess what my goal will be here is just just to get up to over a thousand meters and then come back down. So I'm going to want this thrust limiter to be pretty low. I may need to adjust this. Yeah, we want something like pretty, pretty low and this is only 2000. So I don't think there's anything else easy to achieve. Yeah, okay, so this is good enough. This is just gonna launch and get us that one mission. 1,900, and we just have to be going, oh, not not too fast. Just to be safe, let me do this. And is 30, if anything, my guess is I've gone too high. <laughs> we might need less thrust overall, but let's just find out. Good luck, Jebediah. Yeah, too much. The good news is this will burn out so quickly that we'll just wait to slow down. So yeah, we're way over the amount that we want to be at. But we will slow down. Pretty quickly. There it is. Let's have this parachute take us right back down. So we'll kind of drift over this way. Okay. And now we'll come back right side up. There we go. All right, so that parachute will save us. I hope, Jebediah hopes that everything should be fine. Looks like it's gonna work out fine. There it is, full deploy. Really quite scares me the way it doesn't seem to slow down that quickly sometimes. All right, 6.7, that's gonna be fine. So let me go up to 3X. Probably should have quick saved first, but we're gonna miss the edge, it looks like, which is also good so we don't tip. Just need to make sure we are diligent about landing here. 
Turn off SAS for the moment. So how much did this give us? Oh wow, that was 17,000 to science for reputation. And clunk. Good. I'll have to see how much that solid state, solid state, here I go again, solid rocket, the solid fuel. <laughs> oh brother. No, oh, point 0.1 science, wow, look at that. 1173, 173. Yeah, one, I mean, it was like 30. <laughs> Very cheap. Um, that's one minor contract done. I guess I could look and see if another contract populated the list, if it's something interesting that we can do. No. Oh, yeah. Okay, this one's a no brainer. Test this at the launch site. I'll just do this right away. Um, but I'll just do this off camera, and then I'll probably do one more science mission, maybe. Um, we can't do so it's nighttime right now, so I guess the next thing to do is to design an airplane. Oh, that's scary. But let me go ahead and do the one more science mission, since I can't do it with the rover, I can do it with the other one. Um, I'm going to go get my stupid crew report, too, that I forgot. And then we'll have a, a little bit of science. I guess I'd like to get 20 back, so that I can do general rocketry before we do something like actually trying to leave the atmosphere. Although, you know what? I actually don't, ah, oh, I have the money. I was gonna say, I don't wanna design an aircraft until I can get at least one upgrade on the runway. Cause this dirt runway is just a disaster to land on. And I don't need any other extra reasons for a disaster to happen. So I'm just <laughs> gonna try to upgrade this thing first, but it looks like we can do that. Um, I'm gonna save that until after my missions. Cause I don't, I wanna make sure I have enough money to do any other missions? Um, anyway, so I'll be back in a sec. Well, what do you know? I recovered from this side of the runway after departing from the launch pad and 22.612. I think that's all the money back. Yeah, just lost one kerbuck. Just one kerbuck for fuel. That's definitely not the gas prices I'm seeing these days. Anyway, I think it's time to build our aircraft. We gotta do something fun. So we're gonna do an aircraft. Which means no more, no more flying around in this, I mean, driving around this stupid cheetah. So yeah, let's do a new one. I'm gonna do an inline cockpit. I do like to use these circular intakes for my first one. And then I think I'll put a couple fuselages. Maybe two of those, yeah, more than one. And now there's a question about what kind of wings to do. Oops. Um, so too small. Okay, I could rotate these and let me turn on snapping so that I can get that. Do I not have, oh, I guess you don't actually get, I mean, you can rotate this. But let me just use the swept wings. We can make this work. Kind of look like a, a MIG. <laughs> well, I should probably turn on symmetry. It's going to be a very helpful to get this thing airborne. All right, now let's see. We'll want to put an engine on it. That's for sure. This is a really tiny one, so we're going to go with the Weasley. OK, I feel like we're halfway there already. Probably I need to turn on these things. All right. And uh, the, the real last order of business is just gonna be to put some wheels on this thing. I think she's already, no my goodness, she needs a tail. Boy. So things might go very poorly in this flight. Just expect it. I, I'm expecting it. Turn off symmetry for a moment. This one right at the edge there. And then we're going to want um, some aileron. Elevons? Elevons? Turn off snopping again so that we can get. Wow, this is garbage. Oh, good. Turn on. Yeah. Turn on symmetry. And now, which way does this go if we deploy it? Okay, yeah, that's good. That's the way I want it. So we can use this as flaps, although, I mean, it'd probably be better if I had two of them on there. 
Um, this will be behind our centered mass, so it should work. So you can rotate it from our center of mass. Um, as fuel depletes, the weight is going to go further forward, which means that we probably want these wings... Let me turn back on snapping. We probably want these wings a little bit more. I do like it at least a little bit behind, because um, I prefer my, my nose to drop. Um, I, I find that they're a little bit more functional if your nose drops when you're in uh, when you're not controlling it. So like the trim, you can think of it almost like I like my trim to be a little bit so the nose is dropping um, when I'm not doing anything in like neutral flight or something like that. We do need some wheels though. Definitely want the steering wheel in the front. And we may end up manipulating this one a little bit with the uh, two and three, the move and rotate, not the rotate to that one. And then I'm gonna put on some really goofy, ugly looking side wheels, <laughs> just to say we can. This one pretty far back. So we can do it something like this. Yeah, and you can see how much, incredibly how much further back, I mean, um, a lot higher these are. We can mitigate that a little bit with using the two key to go to move and moving this. Dang it. Well, that's fine. I snapped it by accident, but then we can move this in. And that's a little bit better. Of course, we're also, you know, making it so that it's <laughs> not as uh, high off the ground. That's probably okay. And I do like my nose higher than my, I mean, I definitely want my nose slended up. This might be a little too much. You go ahead and try to adjust this part slightly. Put this one down a little bit. That looks pretty good. I think we'll get a slight nose slant, won't be too much. And I hope that this is sufficient. Um, I, I, oh my goodness, I need a name. Okay, now this is a particularly interesting list I got here. <laughs> Um, let's go with, uh, it's just a folk saying. I don't know, there's so many different ways I can interpret this, I'm pretty sure I know exactly how it's supposed to be interpreted, but because, anyway, it's gonna be the, it's just a folk saying one. Which seems like, yeah, okay, better at least for an airplane than anything else. <laughs> okay, um, let's test this out. I think it's okay. I can, we'll find out, won't we? And we're going to be taking off on the uh, runway, so that could be a, a disaster all, all on its own. Okay, it's not too much Noah. I, you know what, I'm going to revert this. I want a little bit more tilt up, so I'm going to go back to two and drag this down just a smidge. Save it. Launch. How much did that impact our nose tilt? Hopefully a little bit. So I want that. I, otherwise, I, 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 you know, I want to get off the runway. Eh, not very much. I think I can be even more aggressive with it. The problem is that we're actually not, we don't have very much clearance in the rear. <laughs> I, I probably need to turn... Okay, let's just... Let's do a quick test. We're going to test it out. This will be reverted, don't you worry. But the question is, could this thing get off if it if it had to? I'm thinking the answer is going to be yes. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord, help me. to see here. I think we're gonna have to revert that one though. Yeah, I have an idea. I think I have an idea. So I think I'd like to get... Okay, we're gonna have some fun here. Let's throw on another fuselage. Put these wings back. Snapping. Okay, and now I'm just gonna grab this one and add a couple wheels in the back as well. Um, it'll be a little goofy. They'll be here for now and then we'll rotate them and get that all fixed out. 
So I, what I want to do is I still want to grab these and move them down just a little bit. Okay, I want to move this one back down a little bit. And now we got to do some rotating of these and probably have to move them up. Yeah, it does look like they're a little bit too low. So this is gonna save us from having a tail bottom out type thing. And honestly, these, they do need, they need to move forward. Okay, so this is, um, this is the grand plan. And I actually want this one to go even lower. Is it hanging in free space? No, it's good. It's good. Okay, I like this. It's gonna be a lot more nose tilt. The side wheels are lower than the back ones, which is important to me. Only by a little bit. So I think it'll be actually the rear wheels which are lined up with this thing, because like there's a slant here. And I think these are above the slant between the bottom of this wheel and the bottom of this wheel. Which I could solve in two ways. I can move these up more, or I can move these down more. Um try moving them up just a smidge. I think they'll still protect our tail. So it's just a folk saying is gonna, I mean, I should probably turn on these things. See how we're doing. Okay, good. Center mass just in front still. I like that. I saw it move right when I hit launch there, which is a little bit concerning. <laughs> Hopefully not very concerning. And I'm pretty sure our mission is only to I did accept this one, right? Yeah. I think our mission is only to um, do a crew report. So that shouldn't be, I mean, we don't have any science stuff on this, although we could, but let's just try to get her airborne first. All right, the it's just a folk saying, number one, taxiing and now taking off. Could actually do this to see how we're doing. Are we gonna, I didn't, you know, I messed up. I forgot to, the whole point of moving the tail, I mean, extending the tail was that I wanted to grab this and add two more like this. This would be a nice, this is a very, very assured way of getting enough um, rotation to get us off the runway. So let's try it that way. That's what I wanted to do the whole time. I'm just not, it was, wasn't thinking. And I probably should have looked at the new aerodynamics versus the lift. Could have arrived at a bad situation, but hey, whatever. The, it'll let us know on its own, I guess. So how are we doing here? Getting some drag. Got this down to two thirds. We're definitely going fast enough to take off. Oh yeah, oh my gosh. Oh, she's up. She's up. And she flies. Turn us off. She flies. Okay, let's turn off SAS. See how, oh my gosh, she sinks. Wait, does she? I don't know what she does. Um, all I know is we have a success. We made an airplane on the first try, hooray. Love airplanes. I don't know why. It's kind of an obsession to play with these things. All right, let's turn south if we can get this thing to obey. Let's go get our crew report. Yeah, she's a little finicky. Um, of course, controlling with WASDQE is something else. And we're about to crash. Let's try not to do that. Okay, so how far do we have to go? Do we have enough fuel to get there? Yeah, I guess we could go to the... The Inland Island, is it? Is that its own biome? I think it is. Anyway, we have plenty of liquid fuel, so I can kind of burn the engine pretty toasty here. We're gonna get more drag as we get close to the speed, as we approach the speed of sound, which I think is around three something. So let me just try to cruise at around 250. Should be about, well, a little bit faster than you would cruise in a commercial aircraft, so we're still fighter aircraft speeds. But yeah, actually this is this is pretty good. I'm actually really happy with this. 
long as we're not about to hit the ground. So let's see how she holds on time warp two. Okay, she's still climbing. We don't, I don't want her to climb over a kilometer. I want to keep her nice and close to the ground. We'll cut a little bit of speed. Go back. Is her nose climbing over time or falling? This is um, one of the questions I always want to know. Which we can just tell by viewing this gauge. Is it moving below or above 10? I don't know. I think she's actually stable, which is remarkable in its own right. Okay, we're about halfway there. The it's just a folk saying is going to be our first successful aircraft mission. So I just tapped F there to release SAS for a fraction of a second. We've got our nose to dip, and then we're going to start descending, which is fine by me. We're getting close enough now. Wow, this is this mission has been just perfect. Now, obviously, I'm not going to be able to get out and do a crew report more than once, so we'll just get it right at the time. Wait, world's first milestone. Oh, we're breaking land distance stuff and getting a lot of money, a little bit of science. We've entered this, crew report, keep the experiment, got it. Home we go! Wow, this is a very successful mission so far. Oh my god, I have time. <laughs> we're still on time dilation. Or time speed up. Okay, let's try to do this in a way which doesn't kill everyone. Heading home, heading home. There's home. All right, fixed aircraft or fixed um, landing gear aircraft. Looks like kind of like a Cessna with those wings. Anyway, I need more speed, and off we go. So I'll take her home and I'll cut you back in for the landing, which I think will be an interesting part. Uh, and actually, it shouldn't take me that long to get there anyway. Dip the nose a little bit. See you in a second. Well, the lights of Kerbal Launch Center are visible. We're gonna turn and make our final approach. Wow, this I I am actually pretty surprised at this thing. Let's take off SAS and see how stable slash unstable she is. Probably a terrible idea this late in the game after we've done so well. <laughs> it's just probably not a good idea. But I do want to land without SAS because I do want to float. I like to float my planes in at very slow speeds. So anyways, we're going to go over here, we're going to make a hard turn, and this is not the way you should ever land an aircraft, but you can do it this way in Kerbal, and probably in pretty much any game you want. <laughs> so I need enough to be not going down. Oh man, this I forgot this aircraft, uh, this runway is not good. Okay, let's kill our, our, our whatever. And what I want to do, what I don't have the ability to, oh my god, we need more. She's definitely not a leaf. We need more. We need more. Okay, alright. That's good. Oh god, we need more. We're like very, very close to the ground. We're trying to climb to get above the runway. <laughs> Okay, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Oh my god, she's okay. Oh, oh god. Ah. But you know, everything but the landing went pretty well. Ah! Whoa, what is this? Is that. That's Kerb. Was that Jebediah? No. You wouldn't have been ejected. Vessel destroyed. Well, luckily for us, I can re revert to launch. <laughs> so I'll bring you back <laughs> for take two of our landing. I'm not going to change anything. In my opinion, it's not fair to. I know I can do this landing without goofing it up. That was a that was a pretty spectacular fail on my part. Basically, it was a piloting error. I don't think. I mean, I'm I'm not saying that this thing is like a joy to land. I'm pretty sure it is going to be challenge to land um, but let's let's um let's give it a, a better shot than that so I'll go over collect the science and then when I once again see the beautiful lights of Kerbal Launch Center when I return oh gosh 
Yeah, she's okay. I mean, even without SAS, I just... Not bad. So I'll see you back in a moment. All right. Let's try this again. I did quick save this time, so I won't have to do it again, you know, entirely if we muck this one up too. Anyway, I think we just... Uh, just need to come in and... Oh, yeah, I'm going to try something else this time. I'm going to extend our flaps. Both of them, preferably. Good. Yeah, they're symmetric. Good. That's good to know. So this is going to be, if I take off this, we're dropping, but we should be dropping by less. And I think that we'll be a little bit more stable. Oh my god, I'm going to have to use SAS for sure. I like to feather it in, but it's just not going to be possible with this guy. Now 100, this is like way faster than you would normally want to land, but we could probably land like this. Oh my god, we landed on, on only our second try. Pump the brakes, pump the brakes, pump the brakes. Really pump the brakes. <laughs> Much pumping of brakes is needed. <laughs> um, give it some gas. Oh God, okay. Well, you know that, hmm. Are we airborne? No. Worse. We're not going to take... Okay, this is just not going to happen. <laughs> Let's try this again. <laughs> okay, uh, so that's... Uh, that's... that's Yeah, that's... Hmm. I'm struggling to figure out what to say about that because that is going to be a challenge. How do you land this thing and get it to slow down? Well, we'll just have to land at a very slow speed, which means I'll have to bleed off as much as I can with the SAS and all that. Okay. This thing is a little janky. I don't know why it's janky. Okay, I have some ideas about why it's janky, but I still want to land it. So we'll try to land at as slow a speed as possible, which means I'm going to do these little stupid maneuvers to move off a little bit of speed. Okay, that's a good amount of speed we've bled off, and now we're gonna get it back. And that's a good, that's, that's a good one. Oh no! Oh, wait, wait, we're still okay? We're doing okay? I'm holding a rotate to the right to keep our right wheel down. Oh, come on. Oh, come on. You got it, you can't, you got it. It's working. It's working. Oh, no. Oh, God. Wait. Yes! Yes! Yeah, nailed it. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. We, just, we nailed that one. That was perfect. Oh, boy. And looking at the time, because I can't possibly top that anyway. Looks like it is time to <laughs> call this video to a close. What do you mean it's just a folk saying debris? I beg to differ. So anyways, Jeb died, but as any but any, any curveball will tell you, an accident you can walk away from. I mean, uh, a landing. Anything you can walk away from is a successful landing. It's truly the case here. So I'll spend some time and clean up all the debris that's left out there. <laughs> um, and what else are, do we have some science? Now 35 science isn't much, but we got that contract completed, which did we get it completed? We did. So we got some milestones. Oh, got to up to 32 kilometers, I guess. And the last one, the contract, that's what I'm interested in. Yeah, good. So we'll see if there's some other contracts I can do. No, none yet. Is there any active ones that I can do? The one on the launch site? Okay, I'll do that one off camera. And I'll, I may do some other science -y things, I don't know. Um, anything that's not interesting. And next episode, our our ball of fire will, if it happens, it'll emanate um, from my, either a high speed impact with the ground, slightly different than this, I mean more vertical, or entering the atmosphere, because I'm we gotta go escape this atmosphere. That, that'll be a good, a good 
target milestone for next episode is maybe not even just escaping. Maybe it'll also include something like orbit. But I love airplanes, and that was a lot of fun, despite the... Look at the only part that mattered was that Jebediah himself survived, and that's what happened. And that's, you know, the aircraft, I built it intentionally, just so you know, to absorb the impact. All the other parts are supposed to just crumble away so that you see a nice protective barrier around Jebediah. That's exactly how it happened. Anyway, until the next one, thanks for watching. Stay safe and take care.